This is no surprise, this is T-Rex right here. Uh, this is an exact copy. We call these casts. They are made from molds. And it's an exact copy, a replica of, of a really famous skull that you may have seen if you are, uh, if you've ever been to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Um, this is probably one of the most um, famous skulls um, of T Rex. And I have studied the original, but we have a cast of it um, right in here. And we've done a lot of work on T Rex. T Rex has been a subject of, of great interest to us for a variety of reasons. Uh, we've done work, uh, we do, one of the things that we'll, we'll talk about is the fact that we do lots of CT scanning, CAT scanning, uh, meaning we take um, objects, fossils, and modern day animals, and we run them through um, the CT scanners uh, that they have in hospitals. I work a lot with good old Oblenis, uh, Ohio Health Oblenis Hospital here in Athens. I've been working with them for, for basically 25 years. And uh, we also have a micro CT scanner on, on campus. I'm director of that facility for scanning small things. Um, CT scanning allows us in a sense to look inside, to peer inside the skull, to peer through the bone. And in the case of fossils, to peer through the rock to see what's going on. That allows us to see internal structures. I'm an anatomist, so I wanna know about not just the bones. I wanna know about things like the, the, the the muscles and the blood vessels and the nerves and the brains, the, the things that actually sort of wrap around the skeleton and make it a living, breathing thing. That's why we, we sort of talk about sort of jokingly fleshing out these animals. Uh, it's, it, it's not quite literal, but we, 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 we do it sort of digitally. Um, and we sort of try to bring them to life in the sense that we really are trying to understand how dinosaurs work. And so, for example, we're able to do things like um, CT scan the back part of the skull way back in there and actually figure out what the brain of T-Rex looks like. So this is a, a replica that we 3D printed right here at the Ohio University In Innovation Center, a 3D print of the brain of T-Rex. This is life size. And you can sort of see that it's not real big, you know, don't, don't, don't judge him. Um, it's a pretty big brain for, for a reptile. It's actually about two and a half times um, larger than we would expect for a regular reptile of this size. So T-Rex was, was, was no Einstein, uh, but it was probably a little cleverer than, than maybe we might, might have thought. So we can do these kinds of, of, of studies um, on T-Rex. And we've done lots of other studies on some of the relatives um, of T-Rex as well. And so um, over here, we've actually got a cousin of T-Rex. Let me bring this a little closer over here. That's a cousin from Asia. Um, known as Tarbosaurus, which is basically the Asian version of Tyrannosaurus. And we've done a lot of work on Tarbosaurus. In particular, we did work on a baby Tarbosaurus. This was an animal that was just about two years old and would have grown up to be something that looked kind of like T-Rex. Tarbosaurus, this skull right over here, is actually a teenager. So this is a two-year-old. That's a teenager. And uh, the Tarbosaurus would have wound up looking pretty much like a T-Rex. The coloration might have been different, but basically they would be, you know, pr pretty similar. And so um, we've actually been trying to understand um, how Tyrannosaurs grow. And so one of the things that we've done is we actually generated uh, this little model right here. We are approached by the, um, uh, the Museum of the Rockies. Uh, which is in Bozeman, Montana, associated with Montana State University. And they found a fossil. And there's a little bit of a fossil right in here. This is actually a 3D print. I'll tell you how we made this. And they thought this was a baby T-Rex, a two-year-old T-Rex. But all they had is a little bit. And they were wondering, hey, could you maybe figure out what the rest of this thing looked like so that we could, uh, in, in a sense, try to um, understand what a very young, a baby T-Rex looks like? And the reality is that we, we kind of did. We actually um, generated uh, this, this, this model right here um, in the computer and we 3D printed. We CT scanned the bones right here. And then we made comparisons. We made comparisons with this skull right here, uh, which is um, a skull of another teenage T-Rex. So this skull right here would have definitely grown up to be something more like T-Rex right there. 
And we also made use of the fact that we actually had a two-year-old cousin of, of, of Tyrannosaurus called Tarbosaurus. And that allowed us to do the kind of science that we needed to, in a sense, degrow T-Rex, to degrow it into this, this, this baby T-Rex. And so um, this is only the second 3D print of, of the skull. The, the other one is on exhibit in the, uh, in the Museum of the Rockies in, uh, in, in Montana. And so um, that's kind of a cool thing that worked on at Ohio University um, is actually in museums all over the world. We have work that we've done um, and then 3D printed and it's on display in the Smithsonian. Um, in, the, in the, El, the Los Angeles County Museum, um, uh, the Cincinnati Museum Center, museums and even some in Europe. And so it's been fairly exciting, actually very exciting to work on some of these projects and have them reach a wide audience. So um, there is um, one thing that we're really interested in in Tyrannosaurus is this was a very important skull, but one thing we knew was that there was a skull at the, in the, uh, at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. This specimen right here, and this is a picture that I, I blew up. This is an, an undergraduate student right here um, named Emily Caggiano. Um, she was an honors tutorial college student. She worked in my lab uh, for all four of her years that, that she was here. Uh, she has uh, graduated in 2019 um, and she, um, um, is now actually uh, getting her PhD in cancer research um, at, uh, down in Houston. But when she was here, we actually went to the Carnegie Museum of Natural History to study this specimen right here. And here, here we are studying it on, on exhibit in the Carnegie Mu Museum of Natural History. This specimen here is called the holotype specimen. And a holotype specimen is basically the name bearer the first good specimen of something that was found that somebody thought to give it a name. So in fact, these very fossils right here were named um, in 1905, that they were named Tyrannosaurus rex. So if anything in the world is Tyrannosaurus rex, it's these fossils right here. And what we knew, what I knew is that, that um, the skull bones here on exhibit are actually casts, they're replicas. Uh, some of the, 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 the skeleton um, is actually original material that's on, on display, but I knew that the original fossils were actually behind the scenes in the collection. And I kind of asked them, could I borrow them? Could I borrow perhaps the most important T-Rex specimen that there is, the very first one? And sure enough, they said, okay. So Emily and I actually brought these bones, uh, the original skull bones, back here to Ohio University. It's the first time they had ever left uh, the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. And here they are in, in, in our lab. These are the very bones that bear the name uh, T-Rex. And so what we then did is, is, is sort of what we do. Um, we actually took the bones to Ohio Health Oblenis Hospital. And here, here, here I am holding one of these bones with one of my uh, collaborators, Ruger Porter. And we CT scanned it. We ran it through the CT scanner and you can sort of see the bone in here. And here's what it's like if we sliced right through it along the long ways. And so we can actually see right in here, all of the little replacement teeth. So you can see the teeth right here and there's also little replacement teeth. So um, reptiles aren't like us. We actually have as mammals, we have baby teeth and we have grown up teeth. We get two, two generations of teeth. Reptiles generate teeth their entire life. So T-Rex always has perfect teeth. Not true for all of us, but it's, it's true for, for T-Rex. Uh, if they break a tooth, they just make a new one. Um, and so it's this very impressive thing that, uh, that reptiles do. And so um, uh, we still- on... We do have some questions coming in for you. Sure, yeah, let's just- well, um, well, first of all, this one came a little bit ago, but I think you can probably answer it from where you are. Um, it was, how can you tell that it is a baby and not a smaller creature or another creature? That's a, a, an absolutely a perfect question. And the answer is, it can be really hard. And the reality is we have um, debates about this. So I'll come over here and 
show you a skull. This skull right up here um, is also considered a, 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 a young T-Rex, probably a teenager, like a 12 or 13 year old T-Rex specimen. This is in the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And this actually was thought to be a completely different animal. It was actually given the name Nanotyrannus, not T-Rex. It was actually thought to be um, a different species, just a small tyrannosaur. Um, the science that has gone on um, in, in recent years has actually shown that those young specimens actually did grow up to be um, uh, to be T-Rex. In the case of this one that we looked at over here, the Tarbosaurus, um, in that case, the babies were actually found right with older animals. And so we could actually find in the ground, I, I didn't collect these, these were collected by others. We actually were able to find these in the ground. Uh, T-Rex in the United States tend to, tends to be found isolated. And so we, um, um, we have to sort of use clues to figure out whether it's actually the, uh, the, the same species. One of the things that's key to answer that question is if they are found in the same rocks. Very often we can find um, rocks that are of different age. And if we find things that may look like Tyrannosaurus, we start to question whether they might actually truly be T-Rex simply because they're from different, may, maybe drastically different ages, maybe a million or 500,000 years apart, in which case they might actually be a different species. But if we find fossils at the same layer, there's a decent chance that they were all part of the same species, but it can be hard. That's a great question. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I think that's it for now, but I'll let you keep going and I'll let you know. Okay, great. So just to get back a little bit to um, uh, uh, T-Rex and, and the holotype, so we had the T-Rex holotype specimens on loan. Um, Emily Caggiano was here with studying. We actually, um, let me just show you this last one right here. Um, we actually, um, Emily and I did a number of, of studies of these and we actually um, <laughs> recorded some of those. We actually have a, a video series that we had called uh, Dissecting with Emily. It started out with um, Emily just dissecting things in our, in our labs um, as we'll see in a second, we actually get carcasses in from all over the, all over the country um, of deceased animals that are donated to us. And Emily wound up being a rock star dissector. And so she dissected a lot of those. But when we got the T-Rex into our lab, um, Emily started doing a lot of work on, on Tyrannosaurus as well. And so we have um, a whole series of videos. Um, you, you can actually see that we have a, a dissecting with Emily um, playlist on, on our YouTube channel. Um, such that Emily actually became fairly, fairly popular when we, I took her to a, um, a conference, the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, and people were coming up to her and saying like, you're dissecting with Emily, Emily. And so what she thought was, was pretty cool because she was like a junior. Um, and so um, she's now a cancer researcher. And so we're really thrilled that she's, um, 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 really going in that direction because she's uh, really, really quite brilliant. So we did a lot of work with the, with the holotype, but ultimately what we we had to do was to send it back to the uh, to the Carnegie Museum. But what we did do is we asked the Carnegie very nicely if they would be willing to give us replicas of the um, the holotype skull. And so they did. They actually made us replicas of all eight of the skull bones. Uh, the, the holotype T-Rex only had eight skull bones preserved and they actually gave, gave these to us. And so I'm just gonna show you a couple of these bones right here. So we'll put that right there. And here's one of them right here. This is the left lower jaw and this would go right around in here. So if you can see that, that would fit kind of like that. And then we could also see let me grab the upper jaw. This right here is the upper jaw, which is just an amazing bone. It's, it's huge. It's the equivalent of, of this bone right in here in us, the upper, uh, the upper jaw. And so this is a very impressive bone. And this would sit right about like that. So it's this bone right here, and it would sit like that. The holotype skull... Um, is actually a little bigger than this guy right here. Um, and the nice thing about having the cast 
is these are exact replicas, but they're way lighter than the original. And they're also not the originals. So we can be, uh, we can study them a whole lot more aggressively, if you will. We can look at these things and, and turn them around, look at them from all angles. We just can't do that with the originals because we're just worried to death that we're gonna break them. Um, so um, lots of work that we do on, on, on T-Rex. And so we could talk about this for a long time because we've done lots of work and published scientific articles. And um, you know, T-Rex is, it's one of my favorites. It's a favorite of, of, of a lot of other folks. Well, let's move on and look at some other, other things that we've got uh, going on in here.